I'm Alex. Uh, I used to work uh, in a Haas company for five years. Now I don't anymore. But um, um, uh, while working uh, with Haskell, I've um, developed this library called Super Record, which basically implements anonymous records for Haskell. Um, I left out the motivation why you might want anonymous records in this talk. So it's more of like a, a, a talk about how I implemented it. Um, but come talk to me afterwards if you're particularly interested in that. Um, cool, so, kick, so to kick things off, um, what's an anonymous record, right? Um, so uh, I've just put like two, two examples here. So the, uh, the, the first uh, binding I have is um, basically I'm creating a record with two fields. One field is the field name, and I put the value Alex in, and then I put my age in the second field. Um, and if you compare that to like a regular Haskell data type where you first go ahead and like declare a, a data type, right? You've got like data person, have like a field name and a field age, and then you would like declare your person. So uh, one is like, you just have the structure uh, of, of, of the data you're, you're working with. And in the other case, you're actually having like a nominal uh, thing that you uh, fill with values. <clears throat> um, and so what's the type of, of this? Um, of this uh, construct, well, basic, basically it's something called a record, whatever that is. And then on, on type level, basically we keep track what's inside the record, right? So we know here, uh, this particular record, it has uh, one key called name, and the values that are associated with that key have the type string, and the age is basically in. Um, and we'll come back later to this a little bit more, but that's basically roughly how it works or how it looks like from the outside. Um, and if you would now go in and like uh, mistype H and put like H uh, with like two E's or something, you'd get an outcome error. So like that's all checked. Also, you can't put like a string in H here. Yeah. Um, so so what 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 do, do like operations look like on these on these um, uh, on these uh, records? So basically, what you can now say is, well, uh, uh, I want to greet or I want to like write a function that prints out hello name. But I don't really care about the shape of the record. Like I, I don't care what other fields it has. I only care that like it has a field called name, and that field's type is string. And then, and like there can be more additional keys, but we don't care about these. So you can write like nice functions that basically take any record that has at least the field uh, name of type string, and then we print it. So the first function would like would it like work with our record um, above. But also, like I put some more examples here, it also would work with other records, right? So it would work with a record that just has like a name and no age, or maybe like another record that like has a favorite color and then a name. These would all type check if you happen with this function. So if you compare this to like the, the classic way of doing this would be uh, like just to take an, uh, a person here and then call the name uh, here, but you can only take exactly this person record or the person data structure at this point, right? So this gives you a lot more flexible uh, flexibility. <clears throat> cool. So how uh, do we implement this? Well, there's a lot of uh, uh, record or libraries has been have been out there for quite a long time that implement this, and then they've implemented this quite differently from what I'm showing here. Basically, what they're doing is they're building a, a huge linked list. Um, which is um, uh, like from an implementation standpoint quite nice because it's like easy to reason about, right? You have this linked list. You just like when you're looking for a key, you just look at the first uh, element in, in your linked list. If that has the key, then you take that. Otherwise, you move to the next. But unfortunately, like basically, if you wanted to access like something that's very deep inside your record, you would have to traverse the whole linked list. And so you have a lot of interaction just to read a single field. So uh, uh, Haskell has this nice thing called small array. Um, which is basically just an array, um, and um, um, we we do some like black magic here and just have a small array of type, uh, and then inside we have uh, things called uh, type any. So we don't really care about the type at this point of the API anymore, but we want to make this thing type safe, right? So um, on, on type level, we will track what what's actually in this array. So the, the whole trick of this library is basically on type level we keep track of what keys and what values we have. And then we write some type level uh, type families that will tell us at what index in the small error we actually shove this value in. And then when we write, we just write in that position and when we read, we read back and we can us back into the original type we had. So, um, right, so and then it, basically you have like some, some hackery to make like labels and values with nice on, on, on using like uh, uh, type operators to, to get this nice syntax. 
Cool. And so what's an empty record look like? <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, it's not pretty, I, 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 I agree. Um, but basically what you do is you allocate a new small array uh, with no values, um, and then you freeze it and return it. So there's nothing really magic happening here. Um, and then uh, consing is a little bit more tricky, and in the, in the actual library, it's even more tricky. But basically, what you have to do is you have to uh, take the old array, um, and then you have to copy it, because we don't want to mutate the old thing, right? Otherwise, we would lose all the nice uh, referential transparency. And then we would have to write the new, uh, the new thing in the right position. So in, the, in this internal implementation, we always just append at the end. Um, I'll talk later about why this is not desirable, but um, basically this is what happens. Um, and here you can see the unsafe curse, which basically curses the value right into like name type. Um, and then on title, we check some things like uh, that the key doesn't already exist, for example. Um, and we want to know that like the, the size of the current record is a known NAT. And so we can compute the new size and like you want to coerce type level a number back to your value that level number to be able to increase it by one, uh, uh, which happens down here. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, that's like an example. So you write like type down like this. Well, we have a record, right? And this is all the fields you have. And then you compute what's the size of the record. Um, and for reading, basically all you have to do is you have to know, you have to like compute a type level, what's my position, right? Where is this key stored in my small array? And then uh, once you can compute that at type level, basically you can uh, like directly read this value from the array. So it's like a, the, the reading a single field is not traversing a linked list, but it's actually just reading one single uh, pointer uh, in a small array, which is really nice performance wise. And uh, if you actually look at the assembly code, it looks uh, exactly like a normal field access, which is really cool. Um, and then obviously some more type families. I'm um, probably because we're short on time, not going to explain all of them. But basically, one thing you need to do is you need to look up in your map, given a label, what's the type of that 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 thing that we're going to be reading, right? So here's the key. Here's all of the list of all key and value pairs, and then what we get back is like the type of that key. Um, uh, another thing is like computing the position and the, the, uh, where is this, this key located in the small array, which is basically just iterating over the, the, the list and trying to find where is the key. Then you remember the index position, and then that's where you're going to read from. And then we have like we use this new uh, type arrow feature here in type canvas that will actually print a nice arrow if that label is not available. Um, yeah, and then um, and then what, what's nice about this too is you can actually take a record and convert it back to a native Haskell type if you name uh, your your accessors like the, the fields in your Haskell type. And then with the generics, you can actually coerce like a record back into a, a, a normal Haskell type for free. Uh, um, and also you get free to JSON, right? So you don't have to write any additional code to, to make JSON parsing or serialization work because you already have the structure at type level, so it's like free to drive the JSON parser off from that. Kevin, if you want to have like a different structure in your JSON than you, what you want to have in your internal types, then you probably want to write a custom one, but this is like easy to get for free. So one thing I've mentioned earlier is that this record uh, thing is not quite optimal. And um, the problem here is like if you would uh, define your, your you, if you would swap the order in which you define your keys or write your keys, the type will change of these things. So these things don't wouldn't like have the same type. That's what that's highly desirable. So what you have to do is when you cons, you also want to sort the keys so that the order is always the same no matter how you construct it. Which leads to a nice uh, fun exercise and because you have to implement a sorting algorithm on type level, um, which is uh, fun but uh, uh, not. <laughs> uh, if you're interested, we can talk later. But yeah, <laughs> that's one thing you have to do. That's why I'm saying that like, it's a little bit more complicated than the basic idea. Um, so the current state is it's it's really fast. Reading a field is fast. Uh, Consing is obviously a little bit slower because you have to copy and you don't get like. Uh, all the nice uh, optimizations that GHC can do for fields because it has a lot of more knowledge about them. We only support uh, 265 fields in the record because that's a limitation of small array. It has been some work to get more in, but um, that, there's a different problem. Um, the compile time right now is pretty bad if you have a large record. Um, there is some problem with the simplifier that like, just, uh, I, I think, exponentially grows uh, with the size of your record. 
um, which we haven't uh, come down to what's actually happening. But it's usable to like up to ten fields. So like, if you're if you're <laughs> under ten fields, um, you're you're good. Um, and you can nest them. Nesting is not a problem. It's really just like uh, one flat structure can't be more than ten fields. Otherwise, you'll have to do a lot of fun compiling. <laughs> Um, then uh, you get lenses for free, so there's a combinator in the library that just give you give it a field name and then it'll give you a free lens for it. Um, so if you're uh, into lenses, um, then you can use it. And another cool thing we did was we built GHGJS support. So basically, if you compile this GHGJS, instead of using small vector, it will actually use native JS objects under the hood with like exactly the, the structure you would expect it to have, and then like it will like, copy them around with object dot assign every time you like mutate it, so you don't have actual mutation. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, short, uh, and then yeah, if you have any more questions or want to talk about it later, uh, feel free to write me. Thanks. Yes. So, how does it deal with duplicate fields? And relatedly, can you take two records and smush them together? Yes, you can take two records and smush them together. That's implemented also with, um, well, you can implement it. And um, there's a combinator for it in the library. Um, and there's just type families that will check that you can't have duplicate keys. But you could imagine a world where we have like strategies for what should happen if you have duplicate keys, right? But it's a little bit more tricky because. Uh, the keys could possibly have different types, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. What's the reasoning behind unsafe perform IO in the library? Uh, you, I think recently somebody made a pull request and changed it to uh, uh, the ST monad, so that's where it runs to. But the reason for it is uh, you can't allocate the uh, small area without being in either ST or IO. That's why you need to push um, unsafe perform IO in this place. Yes. Um, so all the type checking is done at compile time. Yes. Um, and that gives you the free to JSON. Yes. Um, is there? Uh, you won't be able to do a generic uh, general from JSON, but if you predefine a structure um, that might match your input record, is there a sort of corresponding from JSON? Yes, you get both for free. So like. Uh, you, you would have to tell the compiler or compile them that this is the structure you're expecting, otherwise it can't infer what, what the parser should look like. But once you have that structure at hand, you can like get both to and from JSON for free. And then what will it do when missing or extra fields? Uh, what, uh, I think what IESON normally does, so I think it just ignores them. Okay. Yeah. Have you looked into any uh, approaches that would require the constant every time for constructing like a modern size drive? Sorry? But so right now you have to do the copy yeah. incrementally each time you look at any other approaches for that. Yes, so for actually for JSON parsing, we do something a little bit more uh, performant. It's basically for JSON parsing, you know how many keys you're going to get. So we all we need to do is we allocate a small array once, and then we just write the things in place. So if you know up front how many keys you're going to have, you can do optimizations there, um, which you could also imagine having like construction combinators that allow you to do that, but we don't have that. Anyone else? Cool, then thanks. Thank you.